Hi everyone, I've been getting a lot of questions about how um, you can take an image, put it on your home page, and use that as a link to more content. So let me just show you how I went about setting that up. So first I went to Canvas, clicked on the Pages tab, created a blank page, gave it a title, and I added some words. You can start your page with words, you can start your page with an image, it doesn't matter however you want to set it up. But specifically talking about how to make links out of images, what I like to do is go to my table icon and create a table. Then I'll put one image per box so it will space them out nicely. So I'm going to do four by four in this demonstration. Um, you can do it however you want to do for the images and links you're wanting to include. I'm just going to get rid of that extra space there. And then I'm going to highlight my table and choose the center so that my images are all centered. The nice thing about putting an image per box, my images are all going to be the same size in addition to being spaced out across the screen nicely. As long as you do not adjust this size, um, so if I hover my mouse there, I have an arrow, I can click on it and move it back and forth so I can make you know, my table come way over here and whatnot. But as long as you do not adjust the size, it will fit the screen perfectly. So whether students are using a Chromebook or, or a desktop with an extended screen, as long as you don't adjust that, it's going to automatically fill the screen perfectly. Okay. The second you adjust it, you set the size and um, depending on what screen they're using, that could be good or bad. All right, so I'm going to leave it so that it's auto-sized. Then what I can do is I can upload an image and put it here. Now, you can use any kind of image. You could use your Bitmoji. You could go to Google and find images, or you can kind of create images yourself. And so what I like to do is create the image myself in Google Drive using Google Drawing. So like here's an image I created. Um, here's another one. I just used an image, but let me click this one open. I just used an image from Google, but I added this little strip down at the bottom um, so that students knew when they clicked on this image, they were getting information about e-learning. So you can create your images however you want. Um, here's some others here. I did a little fun Pixar. You can even create banners. Um, here's a banner. And I'll give you these sizes. So like a banner, you want to set up your um, canvas to be 8 uh, by 2. Um, so 8 across, 2 down. And then that will fit your canvas um, right here perfectly, 8 by 2. All right, for the littler ones, Um, let me see. The littler ones I do two by two. I don't think I have that written down anywhere. So I'm going off my memory. Two by two, I believe. Two across, two down. It's going to look bigger because um, it's blown up on my screen, but I believe I did two by two. Two by two or three by three. You can kind of mess around and see what you like. So all I did with this is when you open it up, this is your canvas. It's transparent meaning when I download this image, the only thing you're going to see is the circle. You won't see this extra background. If you want to see the background, maybe you want this to be um, a square, not a circle. You can right click your mouse, go to background and put whatever color you want. And then it's no longer transparent. Um, but for this case, I'm doing circles. So I'm going to make my background transparent. Then I simply went to insert shape. I chose the circle shape right here. I drag it all the way out. And then all you do to type in a shape is double click. And you can use your alignments like center. I made it center across and center in, up and down um, to type in there. And I changed my um, font with the bold and the size. And I can even change colors. I can do whatever I want. Once I'm done, I simply say File, Download. You can choose JPEG or PNG. Canvas accepts both. I'm going to do JPEG. That's one that's my favorite. So I'm going to come back here, and wherever I want that image, I'm going to make sure my cursor is there. I'm going to come over here to Images. I'm going to upload new image. Choose the file. 
Now the way my computer is set up, all my images that I download are in my downloads folder, but some people have them saved to their desktop or to different places. If you've never set up the setting, it's in your downloads folder because that's the default. So I'll click on the image I just created. I'll say open. It wants me to give it a text because images are saved alphabetically. So I'm going to call this, um, I'll call it circle day one. You can name them whatever you want. You can put the date there if you wanted to. You could do whatever you want. Um, and then I just simply say upload. Give it a second and there it is. Then I can go ahead and move to the next one. Now, here's what I do and I think this is super important. Once I've created my first image, I go to file and make a copy. Um, I'll call it circle template two. You can call them whatever you want. But I make a copy of the original because that way they're always the exact same. Okay, so going across my screen, it's going to all look the same. If I did include a banner, so let's go ahead and do that. I do shapes, not text boxes. Um, you can mess around with text boxes if you want. That is fine. Um, but I've just found more luck with shapes. Let me give it a dark color, and then I'm going to double click to type in it. And I'm going to say, um, I don't, this probably doesn't make sense with this picture, but you can see I've got this little banner strip, okay? So I'll just change this really quick so it's not the exact same. I will download it as my JPEG, come back here, and then I'm going to upload new image. Remember, I clicked images upload new image, choose it, it's in my downloads folder, select it, open, I'm going to name, name it. Again, the name just matters because down here it's going to put it in alphabetical order. If that's not a really big deal to you, um, then don't, don't worry about the name part. Okay, so notice I gave one a banner and one not a banner, but notice my circles are identical in size. That's why I think it's important once you've created your first image to make a copy of the image for all the additional ones. But again, like if I was going to have a banner, let's do it one more time. I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to call this circle template three. Um, you will see how because I've done that, so this would be 17, because I've done this, I've made a copy of it versus start from scratch, they're all going to match. So I download it as JPEG, come back here, make my cursor where I want the image, click images if it's not already there, upload image, choose file, pick the image I want, open name it and see how those banners match up perfectly and the circles match up perfectly now that doesn't mean you can't come in here if you want them to be different and change the colors you know and each one has a different color you could totally do that come here and i'll change the color and even the outline could be different. You can just play around with it. So I could have a different color. Okay, now that I've done that, let's see what this looks like. Um, this would be Tuesday. This would be the 18th. And you see how fast it goes when you're um, just making a copy? Now on that one I wrote over, but that's okay. I would always make a copy so you have them, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to come here and I'll do one more. Click Images, Upload, Choose File, Select the Image name it. I hit enter, but you could hit upload. There we go. So we can change colors, but the sizes stay the same and it just looks very um, seamless, right? So let me, of course, you always want to come down here and hit save to keep it, but let me show you an example of what this could look like, right? So here I have a, ban a banner. Remember, banners are 8 by 10 when it comes to sizing in here. So file, we'll come down here to page setup. 
what do I want? I want, I'm sorry, I think I said eight by 10. And if I did, I apologize. I want eight by two. Okay. And I will apply that. That would be for a banner. For this one, I believe earlier I told you two by two, and that's correct, two by two for the little buttons. So banner eight by two, and then for the little buttons. So this is another eight by two, eight by two, but for the ban for the little buttons, it's two by twos. But that way kids can just click on the button to go directly to that information. All right, the last step in setting up our homepage, we've made these buttons, now how do we link to them? So I'm back to my buttons, I'm gonna click my edit. All right, whatever button I want to start with, I'm gonna click on it to select it. And then what am I linking it to? Am I linking it to a Canvas page that um, taught, has the weekly calendar? for maybe my button is a, a week one instead of day one or a calendar that's that day's worth of information all on a page or am I linking it to a, the assignment for the day? What am I linking these to? If I'm linking it to say a Google Doc, um, then I can use this link up here and then I would simply put in the URL making sure I have made that doc shareable, which means all students and their parents um, will be able to see it. So I would say anyone with the link can view when I go to set up the share settings. And then I would say insert link. But if I'm linking it to someplace inside of Canvas, I simply select it, come over here and we'll pretend I'm linking it to this. I click on it and then I let go. And now when kids click this button, it'll automatically go to that page. So I would go to the next one, go to the next one. Maybe the next one is going to link to an assignment. It all works the same way. And then the last one, um, I'll link to a, actually, you know what, I'll link to a module. There we go. Then when I hit save, my links will be active and I'll just show you one, but you'll get the idea. Notice um, my icon is now a hand instead of an arrow. That means that's a clickable link. And you could even see when I hovered, it said what it was linking to. So there we go. I could go, oops. I don't really want to go home because I wasn't my home page yet. So again, it tells me auto rotating slides example. It tells me what it's linking to if you see that. And I just click on it to get there. To make this um, page that I've just created my home page, first thing I have to do is publish it. My three dots will say use as front page. And now you're going to see when I click home, that is my home page. If it's not, if it's still showing something else here, simply come over here to choose home page and select pages front page and save and then it will definitely um, be your home page there. Okay, I think you have all the tips and tricks you need to create fun and easy to use home pages for your kids.